Recently, I had the opportunity to interview Sherry Carpenter about her journey to directing television. Before I play that interview segment, just take a look at this less than 90 second piece about her career so far. And by the way, at the end of this interview segment, you'll be able to jump to bonus material with Sherry, where she talks about Sundance and finding one's own path. So definitely stick around and check that out. I want to tell you about Sherry Carpenter, or as I like to call her, Sherry C. Get it? I'm Sherry B. She's Sherry C. Anyway, a rumor has it that she came out of the womb with a pencil in her hand. Now, I know that sounds crazy and it's not possible, but if you knew her, you'd believe it. She recently directed an episode of Queen Sugar and the Lifetime movie Single Black Female. She's a very kind soul, and that's why I want to have her on the show. It's not really about her credits. She's a giving and a genuine person. I'll give you an example. She knew the producer of a documentary film that people I knew at a nonprofit really wanted to meet because of the topic of the film, and she made it happen. Like, she didn't even know them. She barely knew me at the time, and she made it happen. She connected them just so they could have that moment. She believes in being supportive and sharing, and that is truly a rare set of qualities in this world. Welcome to the interview. I want to thank you for coming on the show. I know everybody's very, very busy. I wanted to talk to you about your journey because I was looking at your IMDb page and all the credits you have in in one department, and now you're finally directing television. Not that you haven't been directing other things. I'm sure you've been directing all the time, but as far as TV credits go, (laughs) look at that shaking of that. So I would love to talk about the journey and how much is like your path, how much is the change in the times, how much is luck, whatever you think. Well, I was a little bit older than your average bear when I started, so I didn't know a lot about film. I didn't have friends who did film, but I knew I wanted to get into it. I was inspired by Spike, as I think most people already know. I started out as an office PA. I I had no experience, but I had had previous jobs. So I was like, okay, what jobs or what skills do I have already that will translate into film? And there's an office. I know how to answer a phone. I know how to type. (laughs) So that was the first job I got. I got. I was an office PA on one of Spike's early films, Mo Better Blues. And I was lucky enough to get in the office very, very early. So the only people that were there were me, the production office coordinator, and the producers. So I got to learn a lot in those first four to six weeks, and they got to know me and see me. And so at one point during that time, This is like a long, long time ago. Spike used to have an intern in every department back in the day, and he does still now probably, but most of the time they're his students from NYU. Um, So I was setting up interviews for the intern for the script supervising department, and one of the producers that I had gotten to know came by and asked me what I was doing, and I told him, and he said, script supervision, you'd be good at that. And I had no idea what it was or what it entailed, and so I quickly looked it up and found out I really thought it sounded interesting. It was all the things I really wanted to do, which was be on set, which was be near the director, be in the mix. But when I got that job, I had promised, I had promised the production office coordinator that I would not go to set. She's like, I don't want to hire anybody that's going to want to go to set once we start shooting. I want to train people to work in the office. And so when I decided I wanted to go for this intern thing, I went to her and said, this really sounds interesting. I'd love to do it, but I made a promise to you. So if you tell me I can't do it, I won't. And she was like, oh, all right, Sherry, go ahead and do it. So I became the intern um, for the script supervisor on that. And that was sort of the beginning of of everything. So let's just take a step back a little because it's fascinating. You're talking about translating skills, which I talk about all the time. I I think it's it's something good to know about yourself that you're not – everything isn't just this one box. Things Mm -hmm. move to other places. You can do more than maybe you think. I don't mean you specifically. I mean a person. Mm -hmm. And um, when you started out, like, did you go to film school? I didn't go to film school. I went to I went to NYU, which when I say that now, everyone assumes it means I went to NYU film school, but I did not. I went to NYU because I was going to be an English major because I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a novelist. I did honestly. I knew nothing, nothing, nothing about film. Um, about two years in, I foolishly fell in love with an actor. Made my parents crazy because I decided I want to change my major to drama. Um, <laughs> I, they were not happy. I said, well, can I audition? And if I audition, can I get in? And I get in, will you let me change my major? They agreed, probably not thinking that I was going to get into the drama program, but I did. So I changed my major to drama two years into NYU. So that's what I graduated with. I have a BFA in drama. Wow. Um, which 
that that person and I broke up. I did not actually pursue a career in drama, clearly. <laughs> but in hindsight, it was all good stuff that has now helped me as I went along. But yeah, I did not go to film school. Once I decided that I wanted to get into film, which was probably, honestly, eight years after that, um, I went back to NYU thinking that they would accept me with open arms because I had made this realization that I wanted to go to film school. They did not accept me with open arms. They were kind of like, yeah, whatever. And so I started taking film classes at the new school. So just some basic production stuff so I could learn how That's to work great. the camera and make some small stuff on my own. Right. And just do it and just get in and do it. So then how did you move, jumping ahead, from, yes. so you went from actor, you went from writer to actor to script supervisor with a little pa in between. And then how did you move to directing? When I was younger, if somebody told me something that was interesting to me, I would take a class. So I started taking screenwriting classes because I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about the form. And little by little, writing scripts, you start to do, you, at least with my, in my world, you direct your stuff because there's nobody else to direct it. So I didn't come in with some grand plan that I was going to be a director. I just was like, oh, I wrote this script. There's no one else. I'll give it a shot. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try anyway. And so the first thing I directed is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. If anyone ever did a, retros a retrospective of my work, it would, be, it would be hysterical to show that little five-minute thing. But the second piece I did, which I did and I directed in 92, I had already been script supervising for about two or three years at that point. So I did have some notion of what the heck I was doing. All the people that I work with who had come up with me as PAs, who had grand plans to be, they really wanted to be a DP or whatever. All those people came together to help me do that first short film, which was turned out to be a really, really great short back in the day when you used to make a half hour short which no one does anymore. So then how did you, like now you're, you're, you're working for, tele, like you've directed for television, right? So how did, how did that happen? Like that's the jump that a lot of people, I mean, it's amazing everything you've done to this point, don't get me wrong, but the jump to TV. I had written a script for a movie that I wanted to make as a theatrical film, which we could never get the money for. And so finally a TV network called TV One came to me. They had read the script. They said, sure, if you ever want to do it as a TV movie, please come to us. And so that's how it worked out. And after that, I thought, oh, I've done a TV movie now. I can start directing episodic. I had this epiphany. I thought everyone else would have the same epiphany with me. They did not have this epiphany with me. <laughs> they did not necessarily think I could do it. There was all this talk for a year, like 2018 into 2019, career-wise was some of the worst time of my life because I kept trying to shadow because everybody was like, well, I can't send you out on a TV show because you haven't, you haven't done one yet. So I spent like a year trying to shadow people and with no success. Um, I do have an amazing mentor, a guy named Jim McKay. And Jim happened to know one of the directors of Queen Sugar. And that's how all of this Ava is in the same way that Scott Spike was my godsend at the beginning of my career. Ava has been my godsend in the middle of my career. It was her allowing me, offering me, inviting me to come do Queen Sugar that really sort of changed everything. Yeah, and that's 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 an interesting point because it's it's knowing someone, also the right time because how long did it take her, right, to get to where she is because of the world? I won't go into all that because we'll be here till dawn, right, at least, if not next century. So, but it's been a journey for her. And then you're, you're, you're falling in and, and it's a little bit of luck and it's a lot of hard work all the, along the way, right? It's all this persistence and constantly like weaving and it sounds like you you found like this your own path, this weird and not in a bad way, I love weird. I'm all about the weird. Um, but this own unique path to get from, you know, and and all the things coming together, right? Because you're still writing. I mean, I know Queen Sugar, perhaps you didn't write that episode, but you wrote your what ended up being a TV movie. So all those skills come in. You studied as an actor. So those skills come in when you're working with actors. You directed your own films to figure it out. And then you were, when the time came, there you were ready for it. Yeah. You know, and it only took, what, four days, right, for all that to happen. <laughs> yes. The whole journey took 30 years. The Queen Sugar thing took about 18 months. But yes. 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 I mean, it's quite, it's quite a journey, but it's amazing. It's amazing. And 
I want to say congratulations to you because you so deserve this. I mean, I know there's there's lots of people that deserve it, but I know you and I know the kind of person you are. And I'm just so happy for you because it's and it's a nice thing to see a good person move forward, because I think that doesn't always happen in the That's world. True. You know, <laughs> that is true. That is right, true. right. So I guess my last question I will ask you is what is it like in what is the difference you know, just matter of factly, it's not about opinion, really. Just like working in indie film and directing television, like an episode of television. So when I did Queen Sugar, I had a two I had a two prong experience with Queen Sugar, which I think I told you, which I got hired right before the pandemic, and so I was there for a week of prep, and then we got shut down, and so I came back a year later. Um, and the first thing that was hardest for me is because I am a writer. As everyone says, television is a writer's medium. So not stepping on the toes of my writer was the biggest challenge initially. Um, I had a producing director and I learned, oh, you funnel those questions, those concerns through that person and they talk to your writer. You don't go in and tell the writer what you think is better or why they're wrong. So that's definitely, that was not a huge learning curve, but it was a learning curve. It was like, ooh. And sometimes even because they write so quickly sometimes, my script supervisor hat would jump in and I was like, oh, there's some continuity issues about this. How do I handle that? So for me, that was a big thing. Um, but when I came back to do the show last year, last spring, the day-to-day is not that, di- the, the day-to-day of what filmmaking has become is not that different. I was telling people back in the day when I was young and I just got into film, we would shoot two pages a day. That was considered a good day. Now, everything I work on, you shoot seven or eight pages a day. That's a normal day. And you shoot two cameras. That's a normal thing as well, which was not the way it was when I started. That Two cameras was a special day. Now it's the norm. Um, so in some, on the day-to-day basis, it's exactly the same, in my opinion. It's the same, you know, roll camera, action, cut, moving on, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you, they expect you not, you don't get a million takes, but you don't get a million takes in indie film either. Um, it's, it's kind of great. You, it's kind of great. You have an amazingly skilled crew, and the only thing that's new in the process is you. So they know how to do this <laughs> with their eyes closed, and it's really efficient. I learned so much because they are so incredibly efficient. Um, they can lay down track and re, reframe things in the middle of the take to make the, to make the scene work. I mean, sometimes I was in awe of the things that they were able yeah, to do. Yeah, that sounds crazy. It's crazy, um, but it's beautiful. Yeah, no, it sounds really great. So did you get to decide how it was being shot? Did you pick your angles? Did you work with a showrunner? Like, I, I don't know anything about it. I, I've never done television. I mean, I think, I don't want to, ma- I mean, I've done one episode of television, so this is how this particular episode went. I don't know how the ones. So the thing that I would say about Queen Sugar is the DP that I work with, um, Antonio, Kalvashi, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He did In the Bedroom. He's a beautiful DP. He helped Ava create the look of the film. I mean, the look of the show. So I felt like I was in very, very good hands. So for me, most of the time, I did not, I would tell him the blocking. I would show the actors what the blocking was going to be, and he would decide where to put the camera. And sometimes I would tell him what I wanted to do. And in my experience, what will happen is sometimes what you want to do is actually not how the show works. I remember we were doing a scene and I was like, well, I think we should do a steady cam. But actually Queen Sugar is not a steady cam show. Occasionally they use a steady cam. It's a dolly show. And so I said, I think we should do this on the steady cam. He said, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you put it on a dolly. He knows the show better than I do in that way. And that's how they're efficient, right? They have a way of working and they don't just sort of randomly jump out of that. And they need consistency over a series, right? Yes. But that's great that you're able to adapt to that and, and still and still make your mark. Well, I mean, I think this is my opinion about Queen Sugar. I wrote Ava a letter, which is kind of what got me on the show. And I said to her in the letter, I'm an actor's director. And I think she gave me an episode that allowed that to be what I got to do more than anything. So my show has a lot, my episode has a lot of two-person scenes. A lot of it is sitting at tables. So there wasn't a whole lot of huge decision making about what the angles were going to be. We're in a room. They're either here, 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 or whatever. Um, but it allowed me to dig, to dig into the performances. 
So basically I would tell Antonio how I saw the blocking or what I thought. If I thought something very, very specific, I would tell him. But if I didn't, I trusted that he knew the framing and that kind of thing for the show. And I would focus much more on the performances. Um, but there's two different DPs on that show. And so if I had worked with Bruce, it might have been a different kind of experience. It might have been, I mean, Antonio's been on the show for six years. Bruce had been on the show for maybe two years. So it might have been a different relationship. And I think that's probably true on any TV show. Yeah, but that's great. I mean, I, that's great that you were put on a show where you could do, not that you don't do a lot of things, but your torture strengths or maybe what you want to focus on. Um, I think that's excellent. So congrats on that. Thank you. I, I'm so grateful and so pleased, but I, I honestly, I bow down to Ava because she gave me a shot and I, I hope, I mean, she said I did a good job. So I, I, I think I did I'm a good sure job. I'm sure you did an excellent job. I'm sure you did a great job. And she is really great. I mean, I have heard from other women how much uh, she's done for them, uh, which is phenomenal. And I, that's what it's all about, helping each other out. You're a good person. You do that as well. And uh, I think it's great that it's coming around to you. It feels like it feels like it's been a very long time coming. This was like 2021. I got to direct two things in one year. That was like unheard of in my life. Hey, so, yeah. I'm so happy for you. Well, thank, thank you. you for joining me. Thank you, Sherry um, B. Thank you, Sherry C.